dead body of the Muslim Student Society of Nigeria National Headquarters held a national discourse at Form 1 National Sectariat Complex, Ekikunam Street, Utambo District, Abuja, on Saturday, 13th April 2019. The program was targeted at religious leaders of both Muslims and students on campus across the six geopolitical zones in Nigeria to discuss corruption, insecurity, and the challenges of national cohesion in Nigeria, building synergy across faith. The national president, Dr. Taufik Yekin, in his welcome address, made it known that the interfaith discourse is aimed to address corruption and security challenges in Nigeria from both religion perspective. The essence of religion actually is to institute moral codes to moderate the natural tendencies in man, which if left uncontrolled will lead to chaos among the people. Our Lord made it known to us that our differences in language and tribes are merely for identities. For the best of you in his sight is the one who is most conscious of his duty towards his Lord. It is important to emphasize that the codes of conduct imposed by religions is such that we will be able to live together in peace. This national discourse was conceived as a way to awaken our consciousness to the shared moral standards among the hard parents of the two little faiths in this country. This is backing, this is in me to the call of our Lord as he instructed his prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that say to them, O Messenger, O people of the book, come to a common word, common word between you and us that we worship none but God. This the basis of this call is that we know that none of the two religions condone or harbor corruption or perpetration of insecurity in the name of terrorism among the people. However, those who perpetrate these non-desirable acts are mostly hard parents of these two faiths. Like it is often said, one, act, one bad apple spoils the barrel. That is, the consequence of actions of a few bad ones usually overshadow the behavior of the people. Given the foregoing, it is important that the people of faith come together to restate the facts of common morality and agree to work together with the moral codes so that the impact of the activities of the few bad ones among us may not outshine our standard character. The resource persons were from both religion body, Muslims and Christians, amidst them were the keynote speaker, Father Professor Paulinus Onokwa, Professor Ahmad Bello Dogarawa, Sister Agatha Chike Re, Malam Isa Friday, Okonkwo. During the program, all the speakers spoke about common values and similarities of various religions and how it will support development of our country, Nigeria. Professor Onokwa, the keynote speaker of the day, said Christian and Muslims need synergy in the context of faith to build the nation. He further said that corruption can be eliminated if we know that we need to be faithful to our duties at all levels. They use religion to climb to the top. When they get there, they throw away the Bible and the Quran. Some do it. I am lying. By the time they get there, some of them don't even pray anymore. So, in times like this, we must hack into this west of the prophet Job. It is the Lord who speaks. Come back to me with all your heart. Fast with me, money. Let your heart be broken and, your, and not your garment torn. Turn to the Lord your God again, for he is all tenderness and merciful. God is merciful and compassion. 
slow to anger, rich in mercy, and ready to relent. Joy chapter 2, verse 12 to 13. So according to Pope Francis, God is never tired of forgiving us. We are the ones who are tired of seeking his mercy. The actors of conflict, of peace building, could be an individual or organization, community, traditional rulers, religious leaders, or political leaders. To contribute to the peace building process, we must renounce ourselves and our selfish desires. Sister Agatha, on her own, said corruption should be taken from the grassroots by both faiths in order to develop our country. Corruption, the canker worm, the main issue that has kept us to where we are today. All of us, nobody can say that, oh, I've never heard about the word corruption. I'm very sure that most religions we know about, most religions we have come across, none of them promotes corruption. None of them encourages corruption. None of them protects corruption. Yet, corruption is on the increase. And you know the funny thing? The corruption is on the increase. When people who say that they profess Islam and Christianity, when they are in government, when we are in public places, even in private places, corruption is on the increase. And one begins to ask question, what is the problem? Where is the problem coming from? Is it from us as a person? Is it from the culture? Is it the environment? Is it the religion? Where is it actually coming from? Corruption. Professor Bello Ahmad Dogarawa also claimed that the causes of insecurity in Nigeria are bad government, corruption, unemployment, imbalance, extremism, substance abuse, weak judicial and security influx, influx of arms, porous borders. He provided 12 ways of tra tackling insecurity religiously. They will frustrate the case and they will go scot free. Or people will be arrested after maybe a few days. You see them walking on the streets of uh, your community. Although they have killed, they have men, they have this, done this and that. But because of the weakness of the judicial system and even weakness of our spiritual system, people are getting away with all sorts of things. Then we have influx of arms. Arms are coming into Nigeria without control, especially through the porous borders we have in northeast and uh, the extreme northwest Nigeria. And of course, some parts of uh, north uh, southwest, especially around the land this Shaki in Ocean State, there is a border there. I mean, in the Biden Oyo State, there is a border there, and people are crossing with you know, you know, uh, arms, dangerous arms. And then, of course, the remnants of what happened in what the spillover of uh, the crisis in Libya and Mali. Uh, it's also part of our challenges because people are coming in with arms on control, unchecked, and so on. And then we have porous borders. According to one of uh, the former uh, interior ministers in Nigeria, we have more than 1,000 illegal borders in Nigeria, on man, on control, unchecked. And you can imagine when you have this kind of uh, porous borders. <coughs> then the issue of unemployment, uh, which is also a trigger anyway. Because when people are idle and jobless, it is most likely that they can engage in a number of uh, social and moral, you know, uh, ills. Madam Isa Okonko raised it that common values and interests across faith as a springboard to achieving social justice and national cohesion. He also claimed that there can be religion tolerance at any level of life, given his life experience as a liberty. You became a Muslim as a teenager. So if you like, you can guess my age you now. A teenage plus 33. You know that I'm old up. I'm, I'm chasing 50 now. Yes. Um, I used to tell people that I was not a combat. Because I 
Because at the time, any one of you would have been conscious of your religion, except you that Allah has blessed early. That was exactly the time I became a Muslim. And that was because even as a Christian, I was a very conscious and serious Christian. Before my becoming a Muslim, I was a man servant, those who are in front of me. And I can tell you that uh, there is no better way to do that one than for the son of the soil to be directly involved. So, many times the challenge I have is that people hardly believe I'm not a flying man. Yes. My lankiness, my feature, my DS, browser that goes off, all those things make them hard, find it very difficult to believe I'm not from the north. Some calls call me away. <laughs> but the advantage I have is that I grew up from my village and I have very sound language. Very sound. So I've never seen anybody that challenge my identity that I've never been language. Some of them say no, there are many houses that I come here and grow up and let me go. But the advantage again is that I am sound that if that English is allowed, or more sound in my dialect than the central Hebrew. And the people can watch us, those who know Igbo language very well, know that it is very difficult for a foreigner to learn the dialect very well. They can try, but not very well. So this are very, very wonderful. And this are very, very wonderful. The program was proudly supported by King Abdullah Ablaziz International Center for Interreligious and Intercultural Dialogue, Kaisid. Their representative in Nigeria has this to say. The time that Nigeria needs religious leaders the most. Not all politicians are bad in this country. But we will know that politicians find the very difficult to work with each other to give us the country that we deserve. We have a few very good forces, but they are being hampered by the bad ones. So this is the time for religious leaders to now come up and work on so many issues, including this other issue. The issue of insecurity, the issue of corruption. These are big problems that are actually trying to bring down this country. It's up to us whether we want to allow this to continue or not, but I think we must not allow it to continue. We must not. We have to come together. The chairman of the Muslim community or your state, Alaji Kulesoni, in his goodwill message, has this to say. This food that we meet here, and he will tell you, and they also know, that we belong to so many interreligious organizations. Now, what is the purpose? To understand ourselves and to take what is possible to us. Because as Nigerians, forget about staying in Nigeria, but you go outside Nigeria, you can't be proud of your Nigeria. Every time you travel out, the first question you want to ask is the negative. Where is all your country always at war? Your country is always in the middle of the When we meet, we suppose we hug, we embrace ourselves, we hug ourselves. But when we go out, out, out there, the narrative changes. Somebody mentioned, I don't know whether it was here or some other place, I think it was there, even when we came here. But a Christian or kind talking about who should be Senate President, and then they are saying, time is a political organization. You will never hear the Sultan or the leadership of the Muslim community at the topmost. There may be, I mean, for instance, something is happening in the Muslims Muslim are not happy. The Sultan will not come out and say, Muslims are being oppressed. Because he knows the meaning. Is sending a wrong signal to the grassroots of the Muslims. And this can snowball into a very heavy crisis. 
That is why Fernando is a friend. I want to agree absolutely with you that the president of Ghana should be saying the president of the Senate must be interested. And whereas when you go into history, only one, only one Muslim has ever headed the Senate. And the Muslims have never come. So I see a situation because what we are taught in the Bible, what we are taught, what we are taught and said, see, it's not the same thing. Islam is peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. So what is the difference? It is what we pass down to the last program that creates all this confusion. And last said in the Quran, 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 he has created you into nations and tribes, to make you feel and to be not that we should discriminate against each other, but to know each other. The best among you is the one that he has allowed us to be. Not the rich or the poor or the ego or the house or whatever. If I'm born an house, I would like to complain to Allah if I was born in Canada. Would I tell Allah, why did you make me go? Why, why was I born in Canada? So I believe I am in a situation. And this is your friends to this one. We should have reached a stage in which can and Supreme Council to organize, you know, a joint demonstration. Maybe against security chiefs who are sitting down comfortably in the air conditioned office. When our people are being slaughtered all over the place. And they want to tell us they don't have enough intelligence to know what is happening in South Carolina. Or what's happening on Lagos, Abuja, Kaduna Road, and so on and so forth. And if they are kept there for so long and they are, they are not looking for solution, can they be removed by the president? I say that you know, that's the kind of thing we should be doing now. Muslims are Christians talking with one voice that this is bad, corruption is bad. We do a joint press conference, we hold a joint demonstration. Somebody is corrupt. Mentioned in the press, in the social media, and has not been removed. Then the Muslim and the Christians go on the streets and say that this man was removed. And then you all know, know that we are really together. Not that we come for to or talk shop, and when we live there, we start talking here of each other. So I want to thank uh, the Muslims here outside of Nigeria. To both Christianity and Islam, this is spiritually bad by this major religion in Nigeria. Two, the conference frowned seriously and rejected in strong terms the incessant killings and kidnappings going on across the country. Three, major causes of conflict in Nigeria are not the respective religions, but the zest for the dominance, power, hunger, illiteracy, unemployment, among others. Four, the political actors and societal conflicts are not foreigners but Nigerians who already understood the functionality of the society. 5. High rate of corruption is the pain of all the vices which were successfully and success successively foiled through bad leadership. 6. The offshoot causes of insecurity were usually not uprooted in its entirety by concerned individuals and organizations of government. Recommendations. With all the information, it is worth noting that corruption is never a human nature and not a lesser evil. Hence, there should be concerted effort to provide and implement lasting and workable solutions to this malady. Consequently, we propose the following. One, it is imperative that we understand the dictates of our religion as enshrined in the various divine books and be attitudinally ready to live by these teachings whose scope of preaching is nothing but peace. 2. The fight against corruption should be seen as a collective duty and done together. 3. Our judicial and legal systems should be put on their toes to deliver justice without fear or favor. 4. Good governance should be the watchword of our leaders which should be directed towards upholding the sanctity of life 
positive freedom, honor, and theology, etc. 5. We should learn to live together despite our diversities because human beings were never created to profess sole ideology or philosophy. 6. Interreligious dialogues of this nature should be a continuous program, especially among youths, while stepping it down to the grassroots. 7. Insecurity challenges should be traced and uprooted in its entirety by coping the problems posed by corruption, imbalance, extremism, armed struggling, smuggling, bad governance, unemployment, weak judicial and insecurity systems to mention a few. To mention few. Conclusion. We are of the opinion that if these and many more positive suggestions are put into proper execution, the country will rise again to join the group of the most peaceful and balanced societies of the surface on the surface of the earth. Long live Nigeria. The motive behind uh, this uh, program is to uh, is to discuss uh, so that we can have a common ground for discussion we are now to learn about this uh, incidence of insecurity and corruption in our nation. We believe it will fit uh, a form of hate, corruption and uh, insecurity. So, but perpetrators of this act uh, from this movement by discussing, by engaging ourselves, by what we will find a common ground to resolve the table is to in this problem. We are quite hopeful. We are quite hopeful because uh, of the responses of the delegates and uh, the quality of uh, information that we had at this uh, discourse. We are very, very uh, optimistic that we are going to take them home. And in fact, we are also thinking of uh, we were following it up. Uh, so now we don't really have uh, this national level. We also have uh, uh, a way of uh, taking it down to gas to the regions and to the branches. I mean, the IS. We were in which would uh, have uh, members of the faith coming together to discuss. They themselves should take the initiative of discussing all that, what we have learned here at the various uh, stations so that by the time we get here, there so will be a new team to the people there from where they are taking. Honestly, as you are all aware, Nigeria is a multi-dimensional city, multi-legal society, a lot of vibrant youth, challenges here and there. The motive of this program, particularly to bring the youth together so that we understand each other in terms of our faith, in terms of our ethnicity, these are these the challenges that are happening in the society. We run minds to understand each other better. That is it. The delegates who attended this program, we want them to serve as ambassadors so that when they go back to their various institutions of learning, Wish out what they have learned here in order to create a bigger awareness among the generality of this place and our various institutions of life. But so do we feel it's going to carry the message so far and then we hope that individuals will behave well so that we get a video from that leader. Action. The Muslim Student Society of Nigeria National Headquarters held its national discourse and the issues raised were on national corruption, insecurity, and other challenges facing the country. The presentations were made by various scholars of different of different religions, Muslims and Christians. I am Mahfuzalabi reporting for Uma TV.